Ghana for Indilo Memamwache. Good morning. It's another opportunity to share thoughts with you, my thoughts, my blunt thoughts with you on very salient matters, matters crucial to our national life. And today I've titled my blunt thoughts of lies, losses, and leeches. Why Ghana keeps bleeding. You know what a leech is, right? Gets latches onto you, sucks your blood out. That's what they do. Of lies, losses, and leeches. Maybe I should have said political leeches. Why Ghana keeps bleeding. Ghana for it's straightforward. And again, I'm going to share two stories with you very briefly uh, today. One, in fact, is just a little bit of a line. Abraham Lincoln, good old Abraham Lincoln, once said, I may walk slowly at this point in my life, but at least I am still walking forward. I'm not staying at one point. I may walk slowly, but thank God I'm not walking backwards. I'm walking forwards. There's a lesson in there that I'll share with you shortly, but there's another little story Vera Henry, maybe not many of you have heard from or, or know about her, but she was an ace author in her day. The story is told of how she won a women's award, best author award in a women's category. And a friend of hers called way back in the day to salute her. It was her son, Kevin, who picked up the phone. And Kevin's response when the woman said, she wanted to speak to the author of the year, was this. The author of the year is down in the basement doing the washing of the week. The author of the year is down in the basement doing the washing of the week. She was getting her hands dirty. The fact that she was an ace author didn't mean she was, you know, oh, she was doing the work that had to be done. The lesson from Abraham Lincoln, move forward. Things have got so bad that on many scales, in many arenas of our national life, we are not moving forward. We are retrogressing. We are going backwards. And at best, in many areas, we are merely static, stagnant. Then you look at the Vera Henry story. The lesson in there is service. Author of the year, washing in the basement. That is something our leaders don't know, our misleaders. They don't know that. Service must be those of us serving them. And one critical thing that we can look at, you know, recently again, former Chief Justice Sophia Kufu has been speaking. And she talks about how these same misleaders will run down state institutions, run them down with the motive of buying them, acquiring them for themselves, run them down, sell them cheap to themselves, and then make a profit out of them. I've not mentioned anybody's name. It, it's, it's so sad, maddening at the same time. Yesterday, I spearheaded that pensions conversation, and you look at people earning 430 CDs a month. Yet we are not thinking as a country. So the lies, the losses, and the leeches, I'll tell you about them as I get to my slides. Let's start with the mid-year budget review. No new taxes were introduced, thank God for that, but they didn't take away any of the taxes either. Road tolls are to be reintroduced in 2025. Get ready. Like I said, I'm not against road tolls. But if you said another thing was replacing it, the AKA the e-levy, and now you come back and say you are reintroducing it, I can only look at you as a hypocrite. That's the only way I can look at you, because you lied. You're a liar. A cut in expenditure is the claim. In an electoral year, if they succeed in doing this, I will applaud them. It was done in 2016. Yes, you could say that the IMF squeezes you. I hope they will be able to do this as they have started out on that journey. Next slide. But then you look at our public debt stock. By end 2023, we're looking at 608.4 billion Ghana cities. By end June 2024, we're looking at 742 billion cities. The increment, 133.6 billion cities. That's a 22 percentage point increment in just six months. 
but there are reasons, right? Let's get to the reasons. Let's, let's go to the next slide. The CD's depreciation effect, as of today, when we gave you our currency market in our business updates, you would notice that the pound was selling, if you were going to buy it, 20 CDs, 40 pesos. The dollar still over 15 CDs. And then continuous disbursement from creditors. Of course, you know what that means. It has a knock-on effect, and you will keep incurring losses, especially when your currency is flip-flopping. Next slide. So if you look at our public debt composition, external debt versus domestic debt, you're looking at that total of, you know, the overhang of 742 billion Ghana cities, yes. But 452 billion of that, accounting for 60.9%, is external debt, and 290 billion, accounting for 39.1%, is domestic uh, debt. You put that together, you have that albatross around our next 742 billion Ghana cities. The cumulative dep depreciation against the dollar this year, our uh, CD, 18%. Almost one-fifth of the value of our CD wiped off, wiped off, taken away, 18%. You need two percentage points, and then you would have hit a fifth of it. Value, gone. So if you're bringing any goods into the country... If you're purchasing the fuel that you purchase because you know how we acquire them, especially with what is happening with tour and everything in between, you know what time it is. And that's why we are in, in the straits we find ourselves, dire straits. But then you do the comparative analysis. And 2023, if you are looking at our debt per capita, in simple terms, if we're all forking money out of our pockets to pay for Ghana's debt, how much would we be paying? By end of 2023, each of us would have been paying 18,850 Ghana cities. And mind you, many years back, when some people wanted power, they went around saying, oh, you know, as of now, if we were to pay, each person would be paying 4,000 Ghana CDs plus. Today it is 18,850. That was even end 2023. By June 2024, and now it would have increased marginally. But by June 2024, if each of us is to pay for Ghana's debt, we would have to fork out 22,989 CDs and 40 pesos, basically 23,000 CDs. I want to ask, how many of you ordinary Joes, don't, don't tell the politicians, don't, don't add them to this equation, how many of you ordinary people out there have this amount of money sitting in your account? How many of us? have this sitting in our accounts. But that's what we owe. The increments, 4,139 CDs and 40 pesos. Let's go to the next slide. But now, I also want us to cast our eyes. Remember, I spoke about lies, losses, and leeches, blood-sucking leeches. Focus on ECG's losses. According to the Auditor General's report, some of our state institutions, that's part of where the problem is. Good morning to Samuel Dubik Mahama. He's doing a good job, but there are still problems. If you look at ECG's losses, 2021, 1.9 billion CDs. 2022, 10.2 billion CDs. The difference, 8.3 billion. That's an increment of 433.5%. Let's go to the next institution. Then you look at the Ministry of Education. Dr. Educhum, good morning to you. 55% of total procurement irregularities came from the Education Ministry. Dr. Educhum, what is happening? Miniano. 55% of all of them came from the Education Ministry. <laughs> I'm sure you are reading between the lines. I don't have to say anything. Mano Bukiti. But one thing that really stokes my anger now, like how far will we go? And I've spoken about lies initially, losses just gone by. Now I'm talking about leeches, bloodsuckers, vampires. Timelines, the ambulance spare parts deal. 9 February 2024, Finance Ministry approves the deal. And 14th February, 2024, the finance minister is reshuffled. Of course, <laughs> Opana knew that it was going to go down. 
Next slide. If you look at the amount involved, ladies and gentlemen, 34.9 million Ghana cities. Even if you multiply by a factor of 10, right? Don't use the 15, 10. That is 349 million Ghana cities. So you add another half of that. You'd be getting around, what, 500 million Ghana cities. Let's go to the next slide. Amount per ambulance, given the 307 that was spoken of, right? You are looking at, and I'm talking about spare parts too. I'm not talking about the cost of an ambulance too. I'm talking about spare parts. That deal, spare parts. From what we've seen, at Mimbo Obiedi, Mimbo Obiedi, Kawakuma Tuyim. Spare parts in thousands of dollars, 113.6 thousand. Nakan and Kaseya saying, how much is the ambulance? You'll find out. Next slide. But the cost effectiveness check, given the initial cost of a new ambulance. Now, please go back to the last slide. The last slide told us that the spare parts were going to cost us 113,000 thereabouts, right? The initial cost of a new ambulance, 133,000. And so of the 34.9 million, we could actually secure brand new ambulances, 262 of them. What do you say? Anyway, so this is the tail of the tape. Let's go to our final slide. Now, if you look at the company in question, comments from the Auditor General's reports. The company was not registered, but had a contract with Na the National Ambulance Service for maintenance works. Follow me, yeah, I'm not saying anything. Just read between the lines. The company used staff of the National Ambulance Service for the maintenance works and received payments for the services. The company was inflating invoices. This country, eh, I keep saying, if we are not careful, one day we'll wake up and there will be no Ghana. Because someone would own the Ghana and it will be left to G, G, for us who are left. Ebeka G, no. Then what we'll do with the G, only God knows. We may have to seek other, you know, countries' passports. I, I, I can't, you know, people, everybody survives with money, right? But sometimes I ask myself, how much is too much? How much till you are enough? You, ha you have enough or you are satisfied? How much? I've not mentioned anybody's name. But if these are not shady, if these are not shoddy, if these are not leeching activities, then I don't know. Like Sophia Kufu said, they'll run down stuff and sell it to themselves cheap. And when you say this, some people on the other side, for whom you speak, for whom you are fighting, because they are foot soldiers, because the political class has made them dependent on them for their bread and butter, they will accuse you, insult you. But the truth, like I always say, is one. You can paint it white, black, green, it remains the truth. And it runs around naked, by the way. That's why I speak and say it as it is. My name is Benjamin Akako. These are my blunt thoughts shared with you. Raw, hot, unedited, undiluted. I pray that God will not just bless Ghana, but that he will give us wisdom to think, both leaders and followers. Because maybe a Ghana ekono, a yasefim, a yanyai, a time. Have a wonderful day.